Now, I was praying in my office concerning what to preach, amen, and I know the last several weeks I've been preaching on spiritual warfare, and, um, and what the Lord really moved on my heart concerning our churches, um, he, I believe he wants me to preach on self-discipline. Somebody says self-discipline. Self amen. Now, how many of you know that we already have self-discipline? It's not something we have to get or find. Amen? But we already have it because the Word of God says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind, is what the King James says. Sound mind means self-discipline. Amen? In 2 Timothy 1 and 7. So we know in the Word of God, God has already given this to us, but how many you know we have to exercise that self-discipline? Amen? If you have an appointment with the doctor, you have to discipline yourself to make sure you're there on time. Amen? If you have an appointment with God, how many you know you've got to be there on time? Somebody say hallelujah, amen, glory to God. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. So looking at the scriptures here in the book of um, Romans chapter 13, reading 11 down to verse 14 in the word of God, and I'm reading the New Living Translation. The Bible says, another reason for right living is that you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for the coming of our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So don't live in darkness. Get rid of your evil deeds. Shed them like dirty clothes. Clothe yourselves with the armor of right living as those who live in the light. We should be decent and true in everything we do so that everyone can approve of our behavior. Don't participate in wild parties and getting drunk or in adultery and immoral living or in fighting and jealousy. But let the Lord Jesus Christ take control of you and don't think of ways to indulge your evil desires. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we just ask, Lord God, for a heart of understanding, for a heart of obedience, Lord God, that we can obey your word. Lord, help us not to be just um, hearers of your word only, but doers of your word as well. I pray, Lord, that we're not walking in deception concerning not obeying your word. Father, help us. Move by your spirit, Lord God. Help us to know in this message that we do have self-discipline, Lord. If there's any areas in our lives in the different categories we're going to talk about today, let us improve those categories in our lives, Lord God. Help us walk with you like never before, Father God. We know, Lord God, many Christians in this world are backsliding. They're walking away from you for whatever reason. But we know the enemy's fighting, and he wants them to backslide. He wants them to move away from the cross, to move away from their relationship with you, Lord Jesus. So help us, Lord, not to be discouraged. Help us not to be disappointed. Help us, Lord God, not, not to, to walk in depression, Lord God, concerning you, concerning our relationship with you, but help us, Lord, to grow in our relationship with you, Lord God. Help us to be excited in you. This is the Thanksgiving season, Lord. Help us to walk in Thanksgiving, not only for this season, but in all 365 days of the year. Help us, Lord God, to say positive words to people, Lord. Help us, Lord, when we think negative thoughts, Lord, to not focus on those thoughts and not say those thoughts, but to focus on your word, Lord God. Help us to thank you for what we do have, thanking you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father God, for shedding his precious blood on the cross, for making a way that we could receive him as our Lord and Savior and be forgiven from all of our sins. And Lord God, we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for every person that's here. Thank you for those watching by television. Thank you, Lord, for those watching by YouTube or internet. And we magnify your name today, Lord God. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Glory to God. God is such an awesome God. Amen. Praise be to God. You know, how many know a lot of people are just doing their own thing today? A lot of Christians are just living, you know, just the way they want to live. They're not really submitting to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. How many know when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as our personal Lord and Savior, what happens is we've given up all of our personal rights. In other words, we have given all rights to, to the Lord. Amen. Jesus is our Lord, our owner, our master, meaning that what he says in our lives go, amen? And that's good news, not bad news. Amen. Praise be to God. So we did an awesome, let, incidentally, last Wednesday night, we had 10 people in the Bible study, and we did a really good Bible study with the subject of obedience, amen? How many know we've got to obey the Lord? We've got to obey him. We've got to be walking with him. And I highly encourage you to come on out at 7 o'clock to our Bible studies. Amen. There was a lot of great input. Some of the kids had a lot of questions. Amen. Concerning God, a relationship with God, issues going on in their school system and all. And uh, we were able to answer those questions and so forth. Amen. So it's a great hour of power. Amen. In the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to come on out on Wednesday nights here to the church. 
at 17 Newcomb Street in, um, in Haverhill. Amen to the Bible studies at 7 o'clock every Wednesday night, as well as 11 o'clock worship services on Sunday mornings. Amen. Praise God. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, amen, that means that we have given everything to him. How many you know that God has created every one of us? He's made us. So therefore, amen, praise God for that, but we have to receive him. We have to invite him into our life as our personal Lord and Savior in order for us to have a relationship with him. The only way to get to heaven is through Jesus, amen? amen. It's not through Buddha, Muhammad, or uh, Confucius, and whatever. It's only through Jesus Christ, amen? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. Amen. Now, we're living in a world where good is called evil and evil is called good. Can you attest to that? Amen? Amen. If you stand up and you come against something that's not of God, how many know you get persecuted because of that? And that's just the way it is right now. These are the last days, but how many know we've got to keep on telling people the truth? Praise be to God. I'll tell you what, if you're driving your car and there's a blackout and there's no street lights on or anything like that and a bridge has gone down, uh, you know, several hundreds of yards ahead and you're trying to flag somebody down saying, don't, don't go, don't go, believe me, just trust me, don't go anymore, stop. And if a person doesn't trust you and they zip on by you, they're going to go right down and kill themselves. Amen? So how many you know we got to tell people the truth? Whether they're believing it or not, we got to continue to say the word of God. Amen? We've got to tell people the truth, amen, about Jesus Christ, the good news. And how many know it is good news, amen? Praise God. Now listen to this, church. The key to victory, power, and reward in every part of your life is personal discipline. Somebody say personal discipline. Amen. Now how many know we have discipline? We have personal, we have self-discipline, the Word of God tells us, amen? Now when is it successful because of discipline, which gives birth to success habits? Now all of us establish habits in our lives every day. Some of those are good habits, some of them are bad habits, amen? How many know we get rid of the bad habits and establish the good habits? For example, if you're sitting on your living room uh, couch or your recliner, whatever the case is, and, and your mind starts to worry about something, worry about bills, worry about this, worry about that, whatever it might be, health issues or whatever, how many know the Bible tells us to get into the habit, when you do that, of going to God in prayer and leaving it and trusting Him in His hands instead of worrying about it and carrying that burden yourself. It's, it's kind of like this, you know, we all, you know, we have to empty the trash, amen? When the trash is filled up in the kitchen, you have to take that trash liner out, you have to tie it up, and you have to bring it out to the trash barrel. Well, hypothetically, let's just say that that trash, that full, uh, that full bag of trash represents um, worry in your life. It's like taking that bag of trash and putting it over your shoulder and tying it to your shoulder somehow around, around, um, uh, around your waist and all, and you're carrying that around constantly. Amen. That's the worry that you're carrying. That's the symbolic worry of you carrying your worries. All you have to do is say, you know, Lord, just go to God's altar, take that trash and say, Lord, I'm giving this to you. I've got this situation, I'm concerned about it, I'm even worried about it, but Lord, I am giving it to you, I'm trusting in you. Your word says to not worry about anything, but pray about everything. So whenever we start worrying, you can carry that trash all around, worrying in your mind about what's going to happen and amplifying those thoughts and getting all negative and thinking, oh no, what if this and what if that and so forth and trying to control your future and looking at different scenarios according to your thinking. If this happens, I'm going to have to do this or I got to have a plan B or if that doesn't work, I got to have a plan C. How about just taking all that mess and giving it to the Lord instead of worrying about it, amen? Because a lot of things to worry about, amen? Isn't that right? But how many know we are Christians, amen? We are conquerors, amen? Praise God. We are the head, we are not the tail. We're the apple of God's eye. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we've got to stay in the Word of God and have that personal relationship with the Lord, whereas we're talking to Him every single day. We're just giving Him our burdens. We're giving Him our worries and saying, Lord, I can't control the situation, but you can, and I'm giving it to you and I'm trusting in you. After you do that, the Bible says, by the way, in Philippians chapter 4, that you're going to have the peace of God. You'll have this peace that showers all over you. Amen? Why? Because you're trusting in God concerning your things and situations and problems in your life. Don't carry him around like carrying that bag of trash all the time. Amen? Just give him to the Lord. Amen? Glory be to God. Now, how many know that God has already given us 
uh, every Christian self-discipline. And as I cited the scripture in the beginning of this message, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says in the NIV version, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. Amen? Now, how many know a self-discipline is a spirit? It says a spirit of self-discipline. Praise be to God. So we have to know and understand that God has already given that to us. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, the Apostle Paul tells us in the Word, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. Amen. Now, a lot of people I mentioned too that are getting very apathetic or indifferent to the things of God. And if we don't take our habits and take a good look at those habits, everyday habits that we do, we will get apathetic. In other words, indifferent to the things of God. What does indifferent mean? I have a definition here. It means a lack of interest in or concern about something. If you're indifferent about something, you just basically have a lack of interest in that or, you know, really don't care attitude. Somebody say amen. How many of you know now that the, the Bible teaches in the Word of God that seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added unto us, amen? So our priority in our lives as believers in Christ, as Christians, is to put God first in all things. Amen. Therefore, on the first day of the week, we should be coming to God's house and worshiping Him in His house. Amen. amen. We should be putting him first in all things in our life. When we get up in the morning, we should have time for devotion, spending time in the Word. We should be spending time in prayer, amen? Now, prayer doesn't have to be a one-time thing. How many know we can continue to pray throughout the course of the day to talk to God? In fact, that was one of the questions from one of the kids last Wednesday night in Bible study. What does it mean to pray? You know, do you have to say certain words or whatever the case is? And It's just talking to God, amen? It's talking to God and listening to what he's saying. And many times, God will talk to us through a lot of different ways, through our circumstances. God will talk to us through his word. God will talk to us through the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, amen, who lives inside of us. God will talk to us a lot of different ways. But we've got to be listening to what he's saying. We've got to be expecting for him to speak to us, amen, because we walk by faith and not by sight. Now, the Christian knows how he will act when faced with temptation to sin because he has disciplined his moral and spiritual nature to overcome evil. As a testimony this morning, uh, Brother Kevin was bringing out, which is so true that we look at grace sometimes as a big cover-up of sin. But truly, grace is the empowerment to overcome sin. Amen? We have God's grace not to say we can sin and ask him for forgiveness and keep on sinning and ask him for forgiveness and keep on sinning and ask him for forgiveness. We have God's grace to say, you know something? I am an overcomer in the name of Jesus. I don't have to partake in that sin. You're tempted, but you don't have to partake in it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 in the Word of God. The Bible says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Oh, that's a great thing. Amen. Praise God. How many know that with temptation, you don't flirt with temptation? You don't go near something that you may be tempted with. Spiritual pride says, oh, I'm going to go near that. I don't care. You know, this, that, and the other. Look how strong I am. Then you fall into the sin. But how many know you don't get near the stuff? Glory to God. Amen. You know, you don't get near it. Just like if you're on a diet and you're, you know, you're in love with pizza or something, you don't go out and buy a bunch of frozen pizza and leave it in your freezer just in case. Because you're tempting yourself. You don't even have it in your house. Amen? Praise God. You just, you just get rid of it. Amen? Praise God. Now, I just broke this down into six different things that we need to discipline ourselves in, and I'm sure there's more even than these six. Amen? But let's start off with these six if you're taking notes. Number one is this. Discipline your conversation. Somebody say conversation. conversation. Amen. Now, Matthew chapter 12, verse 34, the second part of that scripture, Jesus says the words, for whatever is in your heart determines what you say. Isn't that right? Whatever is in your heart, your mind, your will, your emotions, is what you actually say. Amen. So if you're talking to somebody, amen, how many you know you've got to talk to somebody in positive terms? Speak always in positive terms, amen? From a position of faith and awareness of what God wants from you. Avoid negative words. Amen. 
How many know we can speak to people in a positive way? Amen, praise God. You know, we can say praise God. You know, God is an awesome God. He is, you know, he, I walk by, we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. So we can speak positive words, positive things to other people. Amen. Glory to God. Conversation is very, very important because we're going to be judged by the words we say is what the word of God says. So if we say good words, words of faith, amen, praise God, and discipline ourselves to say those things, amen, then praise God. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. We can get into the situation where we're complaining about everything all the time. Oh, you know, that it's so cold outside, and oh, gee, it's cold in the church again, or look at that, it's, you know, and um, I, I can't even see anything with all my eyeglasses, and oh, I'm just going blind, and all these different complaints and complaints and complaints. We'll be walking around the mountain for 40 years, like they did back in Exodus in the wilderness, amen? What made them walk around the mountain when they had an 11-day trip? But this trip, this 11-day trip took 40 years because they weren't walking in faith. Their words were simply um, uh, exposing them to walking by what? Sight. They were complaining. They weren't remembering what God had delivered them from concerning the Egyptians. They weren't learning that Pharaoh was there. They weren't learning that they were getting whipped when they weren't working hard enough. They weren't, they weren't remembering that, you know, that, that they, they just had to get their own brick eventually and they had, didn't have, I mean, the straw to make the brick in order to bring that to them. They had to get their own and, and they were going on and on and on. They didn't remember all that. Isn't that something the devil tries to do in our lives? Remember before you were a Christian? Wow, I'll tell you what, you had so much fun and you did this and you did that. And I'll tell you what, God puts all these restrictions on you and it's so hard to live the Christian life. And the devil says all, sends all these lies to us all the time. But we got to say, wait a minute, remember those times you're throwing up in your toilet because you were so drunk you could hardly stand up? Remember those times that you almost OD'd? Remember those times that you're doing about 120 miles an hour down 495 and you almost killed yourself? Remember those times that your buddies tried to influence you to do bad things? Somebody say glory to God, amen? How I many you know God's way is the best way, the only way to live? He created us, he knows us, amen? He knows us better than ourselves, amen? Praise God. So we got to always speak in positive terms from our position of faith. Amen. Praise God. So try to listen to yourself as you talk. What kinds of things are you saying? Categorize it in two different ways. Is it positive or is it negative? Amen. You know, we watch sometimes um, NECN and, and uh, we see the, um, you know, the weather sometimes. And, you know, we're looking at the, um, the news, the, um, the weathermen. And there's one particular guy. His name is Matt Noyce. And he, he basically... Uh, even if it's going to be a storm outside, he's got something good to say about it. He doesn't go, oh, it's going to be a terrible storm, probably all die, a lot of car accidents going to happen, probably break our backs, several people will die of heart attacks trying to shovel that snow. I'll tell you what, it's bad. He doesn't talk like that. He says, okay, we'll probably get a few inches of snow. You know, the good thing is, look at these beautiful pictures of the snow. Isn't that beautiful and so forth and so on? And the good news is it's going to melt. Amen? Amen? Isn't it nice that we're, we live in New England and we can experience the four seasons? Somebody was saying that yesterday, amen? Brother Kevin, amen, praise God. We can experience the beautiful leaves changing color. We can experience the snowfall, amen? California, you know, they don't see snow. They don't even know what the stuff is. They might have to see a movie or something and, you know, put an air conditioner on and make them think that they're in a storm, amen? We experience all the seasons, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing, amen? Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. Praise God. God is a great God. A lot of people come from Canada to, um, uh, to, to Salisbury Beach because they just want to see the ocean. They don't experience that in Canada. Amen. How many of you know, praise God, that we have a lot, but we complain many times. Oh, here we go again. i got to rake the leaves. Well, praise God. If we didn't live, live in New England, if, they, if the beautiful colors didn't change, we wouldn't have to rake them. But so what? Go out there and get some exercise and rake some leaves. Amen. Praise God. You know, get your snowblower ready to go. Don't wait for the first storm in order to try to pull it to start it. Get it ready now. Prepare. Then you get it ready to go, praise God, and all of a sudden the first storm comes, you get your snowblower, and you thank God for your snowblower. Amen? Thank God for strong teenagers that will pick up their shovels early in the morning and drag themselves out of bed and go ahead and shovel the walkway. Somebody say glory to God. Secondly, we've got to discipline our reading habits. Somebody say reading habits. Amen? So how many know we got to stay in the Word, read the Bible every day? Somebody say amen. amen. How many know there's no possibility of living the true, victorious, happy life apart from a daily intake of the Scriptures? 
You've got to read the word every day. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11, Jesus says, give us this day our daily bread. He teaches his disciples, his disciples go up to Jesus one day and he says, Lord, teach us how to pray. We really want to know how to pray. You're the master, teach us how to pray. So Jesus goes through praying, the Our Father, but he says in, one, in verse 11, Matthew 6, 11, give us this day our daily bread. Okay, that is talking about God's provisions, we have to eat food, but I believe it's also talking about the word. God gives us his word every day, but how I many know we have to be self-disciplined to open up our Bibles, to read the word every day? The Bible's not going to just open itself and, you know, walk over to you on your bed when you get up in the morning and start reading itself to you. Amen? You've got to be self-disciplined and say, you know something? I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and take my shower and so forth. Now at 7 o'clock, I am going to open the word and I'm going to read at least a paragraph a day and let the word of God speak to me doesn't have to be the amount that you read, but what you do with it, what you read. You can read a couple of verses or maybe a psalm, and you can let that psalm minister to you and meditate on it all day long, and it speaks to you. Amen? Now, you have to know and understand, amen, that God wants us to stay in his word. So a lot of Christians come out to church on Sunday morning to hear the word of God, and that's the only time they open their Bible. You can't live on one meal a week. Isn't that right? You've got to go ahead and, and every single day stay in the Word of God. Listen to the Word in your car as you're driving to work. Amen? If you're on that treadmill at the gym, listen to it uh, on your iPhone or whatever. Amen? In your headset. Listen to the Word. Read the Word. Stay in the Word of God. Amen? Praise be to God. You know, some people look at you kind of weird if you're walking into your workplace with the Bible in your hand, but that's okay. Amen? Praise the Lord. It's okay to read the word, to hear the word, to grow in the things of God. Psalm 37 verse 31 says, The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. How I many you know that the only way to get the word in is to read it, and the other, it's the only way to get the word out when we need it to come against the adversary? Amen? Amen? What goes in comes out. Out of the abundance of, 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 a, man's, uh, of a man's heart, his mouth speaks. So if we're into the Word and it's going in our, in our set spirit, it's going to come out as well. Amen? Number three, discipline your prayer life. Now, how many of you know we've got to stay in constant contact with God? First Thessalonians, Pastor, how often should I pray? Well, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Mm. Well, Pastor, I don't quite understand. Does that mean that I've got to pray the Our Father like over and over and over 24-7? No, it doesn't mean that. It means to talk to God. It means to be ready to pray. It means to be ready in season and out of season. It means to be constantly thinking about the Lord in your conversation, in your mind, talking to Him. Amen? It means to know that He's there with you and He'll never leave nor forsake you. Amen? Praise God. We've got to really be people of prayer. Amen? How many of prayer changes things? It does. It changes things. But, but when we pray, we have to also, like I preached a few weeks ago, we've got to have faith attached to our prayer. When we pray for something, have faith to believe. Even if you don't have the answers or details how God's going to do it, you believe in faith that he will do it. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. Luke chapter 18, verse 1. That the Bible says, then he spoke, this is Jesus, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Amen? That, to lose heart means not give up. I'll tell you what, right now. If you stop praying, your Christian life will be over. Amen? And if you feel like, well, I'm too busy to pray, Pastor, I just don't have time to pray, then you don't got time to live. I'm not saying to go out and kill yourself or do something foolish like that. But what I'm saying is, man, you got to put seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness first, then all these things will be added unto you. Let me tell you something. There's going to be problems for each one of us down the road. Amen? Now, I'm not trying to, you know, uh, prophesy bad things or anything, but Jesus himself said you're going to have tribulation. Now, if we're not focusing on God first right now in our life, even when things are okay and good, then when we have those problems and those storms of life, we're going to fall. Amen? We're going to lose it. Why? Because we're not putting God first. We got to put God first now so the storms of life come and the foundation is Jesus Christ. He's the very cornerstone of our faith. So we're walking by faith and not by sight. Now we got problems. Now we can come to the Lord with those problems because we're so used to talking to him. We're so used to giving it to him at his altar. We're so used to just saying, Lord, I'm not worried about this. I'm giving it to you because I'm walking by faith. 
Lord, I don't understand what's happening right now in my life, but I'm just, just trusting in you, Lord God. I can't sort it out. I don't have the answers, but you do, and I'm trusting you, Heavenly Father. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So we have to know and understand that we come to God in prayer, that we put him first in our lives, that we come to his house the first day of the week, that we come to Bible studies, that we go ahead and focus upon the Lord with our self-discipline. Amen. Amen. See, the most part of our self-discipline is where we have our top priorities. Amen? In other words, we're, we discipline ourselves concerning what we think is most important to us. A lot of people today, a lot of Christians didn't come to church to the house of God to whatever various churches they go to is because they didn't think it was that important. Well, then I guess my next question would be, what kind of relationship do you have with God? Is he number one or is he just somebody who, eh, I hang out with him every now and then when I got a problem, you know, and he gets me out of it. Eh, then I go about my own life. That's not a relationship. That's a genie. Amen? How many of you know we've got to come to God in all things? Amen. When things are going good, when things are going bad, it doesn't make any difference. Amen? We've got to put him first in all areas of our life. Amen? Praise God. Number four is this. Discipline yourself in regards to the music you listen to, to the movies and TV shows you watch, and what you see on the internet or on your smartphone. Somebody say glory to God. How many of you know there's a lot of junk that you can get on your iPhone? And it's so convenient, the enemy has made it so convenient that Christians can sin and they don't even have to go to a computer or a, uh, whatever. They could just, they got their phone right on them. But how many of you know in the name of Jesus, we can discipline ourselves and say, I will not watch stuff that is going to pull me down. Amen. Now, I'm not being legalistic here and saying, you know, don't watch this and don't watch that, don't do this. And do, you know, you know in your heart, let me tell you something, the Holy Spirit speaks to every one of us individually about not watching certain things or listening to certain things. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. So therefore, you got to just, you know, say, okay, Lord, you know, I mean, you can't, let's not get legalistic about it. Don't walk in Walmart and you hear a song playing by Queen or something, all right, or ACDC, and go up to the manager and say, could you please shut that off? That's offensive. Jesus said we live in the world, but we're not part of the world. Amen. We can't shut off sin in every area of our life and be um, spiritual police officers. Amen. We got to know and understand, all right, fine, you listen to that, get in your car and put on, put on Amazing Grace or something or whatever. How many you know your, your brain is like a, it, 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 the last song you heard is what's going over and over in your mind as a tape recorder. So if another one bites the dust is going over and over and over as a tape recorder, amen, that song by Queen, you should replace it with a spiritual song that God will have his way in your heart and spirit. Amen. Somebody say praise God, amen. So we have to know and understand that. Amen. Glory to God. We can't just, you know, we got to say, Lord, have your way. You know, let me watch things that are going to, you know, uh, uh, glorify you. Help me to discipline myself concerning what I see and what I hear. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I've always encouraged people to listen to 99.9 .9 FM in your car. Amen. Positive radio. Christian radio. They play all Christian songs. Amen. And what's going through your mind after you get out of your car when you're going into Walmart or a uh, market basket or, do, or the bank or doing your errands? That last song you just heard. Amen. Well, somebody will say, well, I listen to country. Well, you ever hear the lyrics with country? Amen. They're not too good. Amen. So we have to understand that, you know, you can discipline yourself. Now, you can choose to listen to whatever you want to listen to. No one's going to, you know. But how many of you know that we have a responsibility before the Lord? We should be feeding ourselves good stuff, not bad stuff. Amen. In general, you know, the Bible talks about um, gates, different gates and so forth. How many of you know in our, in, our, in, in our bodies we have gates, eye gates, ear gates? Whatever gets in the gates is going to come out of the mouth and heart. Whatever you feed yourself on and watch is what you're going to be performing, what you're going to be thinking about. Amen. So therefore, how many know, praise God, we got to feed ourselves with good things, not bad things. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 in the Word says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, as you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if we're walking in the Spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh, but if we're tempting ourselves with the lust of the flesh by what we're watching and what we're hearing, then we're going to get tempted to fulfill that lust of the flesh. Do you follow me? 
But we got to walk in the Spirit. Amen. Romans 8 and 1 says, I know we, we quote the scripture many times, but we've got to look at the whole thing. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, let's not stop there, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So if we walk according to the Spirit, praise be to God, we're not going to have condemnation. Why? Because we're not going to be sinning because we're walking according to the Spirit. There's no law in the Spirit, praise God. So it's not a list of do's and don'ts. It's a list of, uh, it's not even a list of anything. It's about walking in the Spirit of God. Amen? Number five is discipline your friendships. Somebody say friendships. Now, as I said before, we have to know that we can't just shut ourselves off from the world. We got to share the Word of God with people. But when you get friends that, are, that you're, co you're cooperating and taking part in their evil deeds, that's another story. Amen? Bad company corrupts good character, right? So in other words, you hang out with the wrong crowd, that influence of them upon you is going to start pulling you down as a believer. So we got to be careful who we're hanging out with. Are these people, you know, are they negative all the time? Are they, are they you know, um, pulling you away from the Lord and so forth? Amen? You can, you, can, you can pray, and how many know that God, the Holy Spirit, will show you? Amen? Praise be to God. Number six is discipline your church attendance. Now, somebody look at your neighbor and say, he's not talking about me right now. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. Now, I can't stress this enough. You know, people will make up a lot of excuses why they don't have to come to church. This is some of them. Well, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Well, I, I understand, but I, I'm going to worship God at home all alone. Well... You know, I didn't feel like going today. God understands. Well, other things are more important in my life than not attending the house of God. But yet, let's look at what God's word says. Is that fair enough? Let's not take my opinion, but let's look at the word and why church attendance is extremely important. The first thing is, how many of you know that no man is an island? And a lot of times, spiritual pride will come in and say, I don't want to be part of any church because of the fact that I'm my own man. Nobody needs to tell me what to do. No pastor's going to tell me what to do. Well, pastors don't tell people what to do. They preach the word of God. Amen. They encourage their congregation in the things of God and to get closer to God. Amen? Amen? That's, you know, they don't tell you what to do. And if something is preached that rubs you the wrong way, hey, if it's in the word then just repent from it instead of getting mad at the, at the speaker. Amen. Don't shoot the messenger. Look at the book that he's preaching from. And look at the God who's the author of the book. Amen? So church attendance, what does the Bible say? Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 says this, Let us not neglect our church meetings, as some people do, but encourage and warn each other, especially now that the day of his coming back again is drawing near. And I asked the question at the onset of this message, how many of us honestly think Jesus is going to come back soon, that these are the last days, and everybody raised their hand? So if that's the case, we've got to be coming to church even more often because we need each other that much more. Not less, but more. Isn't that right? I mean, that's the truth. We need each other. It's, you know, you know Paul the Apostle says a, a local church is like the body. I mean, if, I, you know, if a couple of people aren't in church today, then the, the right arm is missing and, and the left foot is missing. How can the body operate that way? It's dysfunctional. Amen? Because we all need one another. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I need you. Just like the beginning of a romantic song. I need you. But it, it, the fact of the matter is that we all do need each other. Amen? It's true. We do. I, as a pastor, need you as much as you need me i got to come to church, whether I'm a pastor or whether I'm just a member of a, of a church. And before I, was, before I was a pastor, I was in church when the doors were open. If they had Bible studies, I was there. If I had their prayer meetings, I was there. Worship, worship Sunday morning, Sunday night, I was there. I'm not boasting about myself, but I knew I needed to be there. Because I know I needed my con the congregation there, my brothers and sisters, to help encourage me in my faith. I wanted to hear their testimonies. I wanted to see how they were doing. I wanted to see how their life was going. I wanted to hear my past the pastor preach the message that I needed to hear that week. So I could really, you know, listen, you know, digest it all week long and, and do an inventory of my own heart, what I needed to do to change concerning what was preached. Yeah. Praise God. We all need that. 
If your pastor is somebody that you're watching on television, you don't, you don't even belong to a local church, Pastor RCA cannot do your funeral when you die. Pastor RCA, the television set, cannot baptize you in water. The television set, Pastor RCA, cannot go ahead and, 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 and just uh, bless your kids and dedicate those kids to the Lord, those little babies when they are born. So what do you say, amen? Pastor RCA can't, come, can't counsel you when you need counseling. Somebody say glory, amen? So what are you on TV for? So people that can't get out can hear the word. Actually, we're on TV to say, come off your couch, come off your recliner, and come here to 17 Newcomb Street in Haverhill, Massachusetts. We're coming into your house to tell you to come out, <laughs> to come to church on a regular basis, amen? Praise God. Luke chapter 4 in the Word of God. How many know that Jesus went to church regularly? What do you mean Jesus went to church regularly, pastor? It's just, look what it says. He went to Nazareth, speaking of Jesus, he went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. And he stood up to read. What does it mean, as was his custom? He went on a regular basis. Jesus never missed church. Psalm 27 says in the Word of God, One thing I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Oh, glory to God. Don't you, don't, you, don't you want that? Amen. Praise be to God. Psalm 42, verse 4 says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept holy day. Amen. Amen. Psalm 92, verse 13 goes on to say, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. I don't know about you, but I want to flourish. How about you? Amen? Praise be to God. I want to flourish. I want to grow in the things of God. I, I, you know, I don't want to just, just stay home and not attend church. Amen? Church attendance is extremely important. Amen? Psalm 116, verse 19 goes on to say, In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. What are we talking about today? Self-discipline. How many of you got to discipline yourself to come into God's house? At first, it might be a case where I don't really feel like going, but I'm going to go. But you're going to eventually get over that. It'll come to a point in your life eventually, if you keep on having self-discipline, coming to church, you're going to be like, I can't wait to get there, man. I'm looking forward to it. On Saturday, I'm looking forward to coming to church on Sunday. What day is it? Oh, it's Monday. Oh, man, I got to wait another two days for Bible study. But praise God, I can't wait to get there at 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Amen? What's the teaching going to be? Praise God. What's the message going to be on Sunday morning? What are the testimonies of my brothers and sisters? How are they doing? I've been praying for them. How are they doing? I'm going to hear their testimonies on Sunday morning. Amen? The opportunity to do ministry. Amen? Praise God. Psalm 122 in verse 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen? How many of us are glad to come to church? Amen. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. Amen. Praise be to God. It's an awesome thing. We all need one another. Psalm, uh, Psalm, uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 53 says, And we're continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. This is the New Testament. The first church starts up and so forth. What were they doing? They were continually in the what? In the temple. Praise in the house of the Lord. Praising and blessing God. Amen. Now, Pastor, how much did they come? How often did they go to church in the in the in the in the um, in, in Acts chapter two? How often did they go? Anybody know? Every single day. One person one time said, "How can I go to church every day? Whatever." Amen. Some people can't even come out once a week. Some people come out on Easter and Christmas services, and that's all. They come out to say, thanks, thank you, Lord, you know. They, they, they come out to say, you know, Christmas, celebrate the birth of little Jesus, you know, little baby Jesus with Mother Mary. How many you know that Mary is not the mother of God? If you read your Bible in Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, it says that after Jesus was born, now Mary was a virgin, you've got to understand, when Jesus was born, no man ever touched her. 
But after Jesus was born, Mary had other kids. She was a regular woman like anybody else is. Amen? Somebody, somebody say we don't worship Mary. Never worship Mary. You don't say the Our Mary. Mm, full of grace. No, 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 no. Matter of fact, if Mary was here in the flesh right now, she'd rebuke people that are doing that. She'd say, knock it off. Stop praising me. I am not to be worshipped. I carried my own Lord, Jesus, and I had to receive him as my Lord and Savior. Just because I was chosen by God to birth him doesn't mean that I'm some kind of a, you know, immaculate conception or whatever. Immaculate. Amen? Somebody say Mary is not deity. No, she's not. Amen? Praise God. So we have to know and understand. Amen? And the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 18 in the Word of God, verse 20, for where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. Two or three come together. Amen? Agreement is the place of power. Amen. When you're in church, you're coming together to pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And finally, Psalm 134, verse 2 says, Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, another, another scripture says, I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's in the New Testament. It says, I wish that men from everywhere would lift holy hands in prayer to the Lord. Amen. So how many of you know, ch uh, church, that I don't know what areas that you're involved in concerning self-discipline, but how many of you know that um, when that alarm goes off on Monday morning, and you know you've got to get up and take a shower and get ready for work and eat your breakfast and so forth and do your devotions, whatever, but the alarm goes off, you don't go, well, I don't think I'm going to go to work and just turn over and, hit the, and, and just shut it off, right? You're disciplined to wake up because you know you have to go to work, correct? On Sunday morning when the alarm goes off, it's time to go to church. Eh, I don't want to go to church. I don't know. You know, God will No. Discipline yourself and say, I'm going to go in the name of Jesus. Why? Because it's very important that I'm there. My presence will minister to somebody today. Amen? Because I'm there, my presence will minister to someone. I have a responsibility to be there. I want to be accountable to my pastor. I want to be accountable to my congregation, accountable to my church body. Amen? Accountability is very important. Accountability is a good thing, not a bad thing. Amen? Praise God. So church, I just want to encourage you. I, I want to leave you with this question. What areas of self-discipline do you need to change that we talked about today? Amen? You can be the only one to get into new habits in your life, to establish those habits. Nobody's going to force you to do anything. Amen? But you yourself have to say, okay, I've got to discipline myself in this area. I've got to discipline myself in this area and so forth. Amen? Because God will bless you if you do such a thing. Amen? Let's stand on our feet and close in a word of prayer as Sister Nellie comes forward to close in a final song. Father, in Jesus' name, we just thank you. We praise your mighty name. I pray, Lord God, that we would all be self-disciplined, Lord God, disciplined to be at church at 11 o'clock in the morning, even before 11 o'clock, to be praying. I pray, Lord, to be disciplined, Lord God, to, uh, to, to work in our ministries, whatever ministries you've called us to do, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name that we be disciplined, Lord God, to grow in our relationship with you, to read your Bible, the Bible every day, to stay in your word, Lord, to be disciplined to be prayer continually, Lord God, to be disciplined, Lord, to even come to Bible studies, Lord, to, to go ahead and to worship and praise you and magnify your mighty name, Lord God. Help us to be disciplined in our witnessing and sharing your word with other people, Lord. Help us to be disciplined in planting Bible tracts in different places, Lord God. I pray in Jesus' name that more and more people will get saved as a result, Lord God, of our, us walking with you and our self-discipline that you have given us, according to 2 Timothy chapter 2, Lord God, in verse 7. Have your perfect way and will in our hearts and in our lives lives, Lord God, and we just thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name, and we ask all these things in the mighty precious name of Jesus, and I'll...